Well, something just about every computer owner fears, losing everything from the hard drive. In this week's Compute This, data recovery. Is it really gone forever? Thor Schrock is the owner of Schrock Innovations. Good morning, Schrock. How are you? Very good. How are you guys doing? Good. We're doing good. Home, Schrock. Schrock. That's right. Schrock. That's good marketing right. right there, Mike. Schrock. That's good marketing. <laughs> uh, what makes these hard drives go bad? I mean, it, inevitably, it's, it's yeah. going to happen. Well, to start off with, when we receive components, we build a lot of new computers, especially this time of year, so we're ordering... 20, 50, 100 hard drives at a time, and we get them in, we have to test them all when we get them, and these are brand new hard drives from the manufacturer, sealed in bags, they were shipped in big styrofoam, I mean, they're protected, 10% of them are defective when we get them. One wow. out of 10. One in 10. Now, wow. when I say defective, at Schrock we have a higher standard for mm -hmm. what we consider defective, so if you buy, for example, a Dell or an HP or a Gateway, if you get a hard drive that comes with that, it's a 99% health, which means... The drive had a minor issue, but mm -hmm. it's functional and working fine. That drive has to literally drop down to the point where the computer will not boot before HP, Dell, any of those places will cover it under warranty as a failed hard drive. If that hard drive drops below 100%, we consider it a failed hard drive, mm -hmm. especially in a new computer that we're building and warrantying ourselves. Sure. We're not going to send something out the door that, that's not working right. Mm -hmm. Well. When you get these computers, especially laptops, a lot of people will, you know, they use, it's a laptop. You can use it all kinds of places, on the arm of the couch. Mm -hmm. You can use them on the table, on the bed, uh, you know, wherever you're using it. Things happen. They get bounced. They get bumped. Kids run by, trip over the power cord. Dogs you know, take them out, you know, whatever the case may be. Well, especially if that, on the laptop, when that drive is spinning, any kind of jolt or action where it bounces or, or gets hit or the external hard drive. A lot of people take these external hard drives and use them as primary storage. Mm -hmm. They save them. My hard drive's full of my computer, so I'm going to save all my important pictures on this thing over here because mm -hmm. I can hold it in my hand. I'm mm -hmm. holding my data. Right. Well, those things are even more susceptible to falls, tumbles, mm -hmm. shocks, things like mm -hmm. that when they're running. So when you have a hard drive that goes bad, usually there's a physical component to it. But even if you take perfect care, you have a desktop tower with a hard drive in it, that hard drive can fail for any reason or no reason, you know, power spikes can do it. Uh, just plain old defective hardware can do it inside the drive that just can't be detected until you put you know, a year of use on the thing. Yeah. So what can you do to prevent hard drive failure? Not much. Avoid physical abuse. That's the biggest <laughs> thing. Uh, and I know I'm, I'm sitting here saying this, uh, laptops. If you have a laptop, mm -hmm. don't put, use it in a, in a precarious pr position. You know? mm -hmm. Don't yeah. you know, say that 10 times really fast. But, uh, you know, don't leave it on the arm of a couch and mm -hmm. then type on it and walk away, go get a drink and come back right. and expect it to not and fall the dog on the floor. Knocks it off, yeah. right? sure. Sure. That, that's the, the best thing you can do. The other thing you can do is to just test the hard drive regularly. We have uh, maintenance checkups around every six months on special at Schrock, and we test the hard drive as part of that. And once you've gone through a couple maintenance checkups, there's not, we don't really find much on the computers usually that's really wrong. But when we do find a hard drive that's going bad, we can catch it so early that you don't have to go through the data recovery process. It's an expensive process. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. We've all heard the horror stories of somebody's hard drive failing. They've got all this critical information on there that they yeah. need. So they've got, to, they've got to go through the data recovery process. What's yes. that process like? All right, well, the process, first of all, it's an expensive process because of the equipment you have to have. Um, you know, we just bought a, brand, a, a new imager, the state-of-the-art imager, because, you know, we bought our last one a year ago, so you know how computers go. Mm -hmm. uh, it's outdated right, right. and slow now. So we got one that's six times faster and all this other stuff, and it cost about $10,000. This is an imager that allows us, once a hard drive has been fixed, mm -hmm. that's what we use to take the data off of it and put it on a stable drive. That's the last phase of the recovery process. Before that... You know, we have to hook up a firmware programming device, another $50,000 piece of equipment to, te to you know, pro reprogram the drive to work again if it has lost its programming. Then the, th the first phase sometimes is actually opening up the drive in a clean environment. We have a class 100 clean environment that we can take the top off the drive and inspect the heads and see if they're scraping or scratching, things like that, to, uh, to you know, get the drive working again. So the process ranges anywhere on the light end. It can be as cheap as $400, mm -hmm. which if you've ever had a data recovery done, it, it's very, I mean, that's yeah, That's low. on the low end. Yeah. That's sure. extremely low. And the reason we can do it so low is because we have everything in-house. We don't have to outsource anything. Uh, all the way up to we just completed uh, what's called a RAID 5 recovery. It was a dentist office that had five hard drives in the computer that were working together, and the whole array failed. So we had five hard drives. All of them were bad. We had to recover all five drives and then hook them all back together and get them to work together again, and then we could pull the data off. That one was about a $6,000 recovery. Wow. Love it when you bring us real-life stories. Tell us about your customer, Carrie. Oh, gosh. That... That was a first for me. Carrie, I, I happened to be in the Papillion Service Center, and Carrie brought her laptop in. And, uh, and you know you, you can look at somebody sometimes and just kind of tell 
that, that they're not okay. Mm -hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. can just look at somebody and see that they're very emotional at that point. They're not okay. Right. And so I'm looking at, you know, when you're an owner of a company and you're looking at the front desk and one of your good employees is up there helping them out and they look emotional, you're, you're like, okay, is something going wrong? So I go up there right. to, to say hi. She tells me about what's going on and she starts crying. Mm -hmm. And she has four kids, all four kids, all the pictures from birth to present are all on this one hard drive with no backup. The computer turned on the other day and said, hard drive failure, can't boot. That makes me mm -hmm. want to cry. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I'm looking at we. we we you know, pulled the hard drive out, and her husband came in behind her, and we're like, oh, boy, this is going to get sticky. We pull the hard drive out. We take it in the back. We test it. Everything looks good on the drive, 99% health. Again, an early stage of failure. Um, and so I'm like, listen, we will get this data back for you. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of what we have to do to it. We will get these pictures back, so don't lose sleep tonight. It was like 6 o'clock in the evening. Don't mm -hmm. lose sleep tonight over this. Mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to put it on a machine to clone the drive over and see if we can do that. If we can do that... You know, you're talking about a new drive plus the recovery is about $200. And you're in and out. You've got everything back. And then I'm going to give you one of these hard drives off the shelf. This is a backup hard drive. <laughs> right. And then you're going to back, back up it up. data. And right. so, so then, you know, we take it all down. We, you know, get it all figured out, get it cloned over. We didn't have to send it to data recovery, thankfully, because if we would have, it would have been about a $2,000 sure. recovery. Really uh, and that. so we got it all, all of our data back for her. Mm -hmm. And when I came in and I said, well, you know, it was the next morning. And Chris, one of my morning technician, was like, we've got all the data back. We're just, I'm just doing another backup to our service. We're going to hang on to it for 30 days just in case. And that's another thing we've done from experience. When you have one data loss, you usually have another one pretty we're, quick. We're running out of time for next time you come on. I want to talk about ways to, to back up that data. Gotcha. That's right, but um, a great example, and we're glad you got those pictures back from Carrie. Of course, the three locations you've seen on your screen, Village Point South, in Papillion, the service center you were just talking about, and the original location in Lincoln. Thor, thanks for joining thanks. us. Thor, thanks Schrock, for having me, guys. both of your names are awesome. Good job, Shrock. Well, thank you. We could use either one. <laughs> thanks All right. for coming. Well, we talk dogs on today's show. Tomorrow is for the birds. That's right. Find out what we've got in store coming up along with today's best.